The Real Housewives franchise made stars. Oh no, I was a hellraiser sneaking out of the house, stealing the family car. I actually did want a little girl at first, and it kind of scares me a little bit. Could you see yourself running for high office? No. Oh. Hey folks, it's Carlos Watson back with another episode. Now, on this show, you know I want to bring you a wide range of people. I want to bring you trendsetters, tastemakers, people who are trying to dent the universe in whatever way they want to do it. Maybe no franchise in the last decade has been as impactful as the Real Housewives franchise, for better or for worse. And today, I bring you one of their superstars, Kenya Moore. You know her from Real Housewives of Atlanta, but you probably don't know the personal side. You're going to enjoy this a little unexpected. The Carlos Watson Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance. Kenya Moore, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Carlos. It's my pleasure. Where are you? Where are you uh, staying safe during this crazy time? I'm at home in Atlanta, Georgia. I love that. Well, you guys did big things in the election. Congratulations. Yes, we did. We came through. Are you getting actually to rest at all? Are you taking advantage of any of this time to uh, take it easy? Uh, no, no. I am running three companies right now, raising a two-year-old, working a full-time job, and half a dozen other projects I'm working on that are in the air. So it's, it's a little difficult. Kenya Moore is a triple threat possessing beauty, brains, and talent. Kenya rose to fame as the second black woman to be crowned Miss USA and became a household name as a cast member of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. We're going to listen to what I have to say. You're not yes, the captain of the ship. Yes, I am. I'm scrappy. I will, I will get with you. I will get you together. A new mom to daughter Brooklyn, this mompreneur is a business boss with no limits. Tell me a little bit more about reality TV because it's interesting. When I think about it now, I think it's been one of the most interesting business in inventions of the last decade or two. The Real Housewives franchise made stars. I'm still here and I'm still fabulous. Gone with the wind, fabulous. You say I'm ghetto? I say I'm fabulous. I'm gone with the wind, fabulous. Twirl, twirl, twirl. If you think of other franchises, they're kind of like facsimiles of our show. Even the formatting, the casting all women, having reunions, whether it's New York or whether it's OC or whether it's Atlanta, we've had the ability to showcase our businesses because we are housewives. And I don't think any other show did that before us. Seeing that I've launched a multi-million dollar brand from this show, Kenya Moore Hair Care is in over 2,200 stores. We're expanding to Walmart, and that's all within three years of me launching the brand. Do you enjoy business as much as you've enjoyed acting? One side is all about performing arts, as I mentioned before, and the other, I have a real love for business and for being a boss. And in a weird sense, it allows me to be creative because even with my hair care line, I developed all of my formulas with the help of a chemist, but it's my baby. I developed everything. I had a say in everything from the marketing, from the packaging, from the scent, from the formulas, from who am I marketing it to. That is all my decision making. What you just described is amazing that you built that in that short a time. Who do you turn to? Like who helps you? as a businesswoman, either gives you advice or is a good sounding board. I have an aunt who is amazing, who is a former attorney, who is a great business mind. So I almost always bounce ideas off of her. We don't always agree, but I always go to her first. And then, you know, being married to an MBA, someone who worked on Wall Street, he has vast experience that I don't have when it comes to the numbers, the business side. You ready? Very good. And one more for good luck. Uh oh. What kind of mom not only are you now, but what kind of mom will you be when she's eight, nine, ten? Are you gonna be a easygoing mom? Are you gonna be a hands-on mom? I'm very hands-on now, and I think that I'll always be. Brooklyn is very headstrong, 
and she's very intelligent and it kind of um, scares me a little bit because I think that at some point she'll surpass me. <laughs> <laughs> I love the light that she is bringing to you. I hope she gets to see all this when yeah. she's older and causing you a problem or two. I hope she gets to see oh, yeah. how much her mom loves her. Oh yeah, I tell her that all the time when she misbehaves, I'll say, don't do that, your mommy loves you. So. I'm always, you know, reinforcing that in her so she'll know. Would you consider uh, adopting or surrogacy or having more kids? Well, we did um, IVF because I had a history of being, um, you know, infertile and just not knowing what could happen. So thank God I do have some options. I have still several embryos that are frozen and being stored. So I nearly died having Brooklyn and at age 50, next year i don't think that it would be the wisest thing for me to do do i want one more yes the answer is yes will i be brave enough to 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 embark on that journey i'm not sure yet i'm still trying to decide if you could choose not that anybody always gets to choose but would you be better with a boy or a girl for number two what would make you uh smile Oh, for sure, boy, because, you know, I already have my princess and she is everything that I could have imagined a little girl to be. And I actually didn't want a little girl at first. In my mind, pre-birth, I felt like I would clash with a girl. I felt like we would fight all the time, that we wouldn't get along, um, that it would just be a battle and it is nothing like that. She is truly like, I cannot imagine my life having a boy first. Why did you think you guys were going to clash? I think because of all the hell I raised when I was a little girl with my grandmother. <laughs> so I just probably felt like, oh, I'm just going to get payback. <laughs> What were you like as a teenager? Were you were you quiet? Were you loud? Like what were you what were you like growing up? Oh no, I was a hellraiser because I had such a difficult childhood. When I hit my teenage years, I acted out, sneaking out of the house, you know, stealing the family car to, you know, go places I wasn't supposed to be going. The one thing though I never did was drugs and alcohol. Was that just lucky or was that something that you were like conscious about? My grandmother just instilled so much of right and wrong in me. And I think that there was always this subconscious thing in my mind that said, you better not. I just remember little things she would ride us around and tell us not to dress like certain people. And she would admonish certain little things. And I didn't want to be like that because I knew my grandmother said it was horrible. So me acting out versus like drugs. And I mean, I was like, oh my God, never. Me, drugs, that would never happen. Say more though about your tough upbringing. Uh, where, where did you grow up? I'm a Detroit native, born and raised in Detroit. You know, I grew up in the 70s to teenage parents. In my day, it was so shameful you know, to have a child out of wedlock. My mother made a decision not to acknowledge the fact that she had a child. And then it just, you know, just got really, um, in, in another way, very sad. Was your grandmother able to give you some of that love that maybe your mom wasn't in a position yet to give you? Absolutely, yes. She was my angel. When I became the second black woman to be crowned Miss USA, she was right there in the audience cheering me on. She has always been my biggest supporter, my biggest fan, and someone who always gave me that unconditional love that I always wanted. What do you say to young women, probably in particular, about love? You know, I've learned a lot. I've been through a lot. I've lived through a lot. The one thing that I can always say, and this is a Doris Grant saying, is that you are the prize. So many women chase after men. So many women are so willing to be in second place or third place or have a baby and not have the ring. I just say, you know what? You have to know your value. And if you don't have that value, then that means you need to work on yourself before you can be in a successful relationship with someone else that has also done the work and recognizes who you are when you come into their life. How was this last year between COVID, Black Lives Matter, presidential election, so many different things? How has it impacted you? Well, COVID initially when it happened, it was needed for me because it forced me to slow down. 
and I was with my daughter and I remember just feeling grateful because I saw every moment of her developing and her first steps and her first words and her discovery of the world. And it made me grateful to be able to, um, to witness that with the unrest of the world, uh, Black Lives Matter and everything that was going on around us, it just seems like everything was imploding all at the same time. And also my husband and I are separated. So not having that strong male figure in the home to comfort you or to protect you, that was difficult too. So it's had its bitter and it's had its sweet. But overall, I feel like things are moving in a much better direction and people will eventually get back to a normalcy and feel better with this, the state of the union, you know, the state of the world. When you think about some of the racial issues that were discussed and that I know you've seen from a variety of different angles from Detroit to Atlanta, do you, are you optimistic that something meaningful is going to happen in terms of improvement? Yes. And you know what made me so proud is because we, you know, listen, whoever you voted for, when we saw that the two most important cities we needed to win showed up. Uh -huh, <laughs> Detroit. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Atlanta. I like that. <laughs> Where I grew up, where I live, it's like, it made me feel so amazing to see that I do believe that there will be change. We're already seeing change. We're seeing more people be aware of implicit bias, racism, um, how they treat people. And then, you know, you have the people, um, you know, on the other side who are being more bold and more brazen as well. So. It's two sides to that coin, but I, but I like to look at things as though they're half full and not half empty. And I do believe that there will, all of this means that it will definitely effectuate some change. Will you ever uh, throw your hat in the ring? Could you see yourself uh, serving in office, uh, running for high office? Oh, never, never, no. I, I will support people, but I will never be in that arena ever. I can pretty much say never on that one. Give me some advice on dreaming fearlessly. I think we're living in an era where people believe in possibility and they think things can happen and they want them to, but they're not always sure how, sometimes they're struggling. What's the best advice you give to people when they come to you and say, I've got a big dream, trying to figure out how to dream fearlessly and bring it to fruition? You know, invest in themselves. Um, I think with like a lot of entrepreneurs ask that question, or how do I do this? I don't have the money to do this. I don't know anyone. I don't, you know, what do I do? I think if you have the passion, number one, you have to then do the work, find out any and everything you need to know about your dream or your passion. And then lastly, this is obviously the, the overall, lastly, invest in yourself. Stop chasing the cars and chasing the, the, the Louboutins and the Chanel bags and, you know, the Fendi outfits and that save that money and put it in an investment um, account for your business or or slash your dream. And that's what you do. And if you, you know, every every month, okay, I'm not going to do this with, you know, with something that is my husband always likes to say that has no no value or no return on your investment, investing in you will, even if you don't, you sell one of your items or you do one, you know, minor thing toward your goal, it's your goal, it's your dream and you invested in you, so you can't lose. I want to try a little rapid fire game with you if you don't mind. I want to throw a few things at you and get your immediate response. Who's your favorite comedian? Ooh, probably Dave Chappelle. Best place you've ever visited in the world? Egypt. Favorite book? Zinzele, a letter to my daughter. Who should play you in a movie about your life? You know, Viola Davis, I would say, but you know, it depends on when we make the movie. <laughs> um, but she might be not the right age. You know what, I'm, I'm all for giving someone a, a new face a chance. 
I always hire new faces. And so for me, a newcomer, that is just awesome. If you could have dinner with anyone, alive or dead, who would you love to have dinner with? Barack Obama. What would surprise people to learn about you? Those people who love you, think they know you, or maybe who don't yet love you, what, what might surprise people to learn about you? I think that people think my job is cool and I drive a cool, cool car, live in a cool house, but I'm actually like an extreme nerd. Is that right? <laughs> How does your extreme nerddom show up? I'm just goofy and I'm interested in weird things. I love technology. Like the things that interest me are just not, you know, for cool people. <laughs> We need to bring you out to Silicon Valley one of these days. I would fail miserably, but I would test a lot of stuff gladly for you guys. That counts too. <laughs> well, it has been really lovely talking to you. So I'm, I'm hoping that we'll get an opportunity to speak in person after all this craziness ends. Well, I hope so. Be safe. You too. Thank you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Kenya. Surprisingly open, not exactly the person I expected to see. I love that she talked a little bit about her business and how that's growing. Impressive to hear her talk about her grandmother. She was blessed to have her in her life. I was surprised to hear her say no to politics, given that she can be kind of political on the show. But who knows, life has a way of changing you. I hope you enjoyed the show. Remember to subscribe. Definitely tell your good people about the show. And if you want more, the podcast, unfiltered, long version, enjoy. Thank you.